But, but you better listen to me carefully. Until I left all my life, together with that of my wife, until I left office, schooling, officer, and until I left office in the year 2000, I never had a foreign account. Never. The CIA, the German intelligence, British MI5, your Italians, your, uh, the, the French, all of you, go and go and look into every bank account. And to tell the world whether my wife and I ever had one dollar, one penny, anywhere, in any bank, in any part of the world, before I left office. I never did. The, interestingly, and it never occurred to me, I, I, I had no desire for it. The only time it struck me that I needed a foreign money was when my wife was ill. And it was a situation we could not deal in my country, in Ghana. You know, and we looked for the most um, affordable place, which was in a university in Europe. That was the first time I suddenly realized how naked I was in terms of I couldn't even save my wife's life, a very noble lady who had been through trying times with me. That's when I started calling around the world, friends, can you help, etc. So having no account, oh, by the way, before I left office, we knew she was going to have this operation. So we had even put a little money aside. I think it was about $22,000 $22, it was going to cost us. My, my wife is asthmatic, and over the years, it has developed its side effects, you know, both in her intestines and other complicated places. So it was going to be quite inexpensive, this thing. And you listen to me carefully. I, I was looking around the world. Can you, anybody help me? I don't, it's not for myself. I have no account. This is the address of the hospital. This is how much it's going to cost. I mean, it was the most shocking, painful experience I'd been across that I could hardly get any assistance early enough. My government, who knew, the new government, who had taken over from me, who knew I needed help and that we had made preparations, refused. The, the, on the last day before we were to leave, she was supposed to be on the operation table on the 22nd of a certain month. Two days before, that's when I got a letter from the president's office, a three-page letter, conditions I had to fill, a whole lot of rubbish. We got a, a ticket, we flew to London. This president, or this man who was a president who had been in office for almost 20 years, um, 10 years, 18, plus uh, whatever it is, uh, eight plus uh, another two, almost 19, 20 years. I had no dollar account anywhere, and I had to stop in London to borrow money from someone so that I could go and do my wife's operation. You listen to me carefully. Eight, about eight, 8,000, you know, to take care of her needs, etc., into the hotel. 22,000, it was going to cost us either dollars or Europe, I think it was dollars, into the, uh, the hospital. When the operation, after a while, I had to leave and go back to Ghana and left her. Here's the shocking part of it. After the operation was done, on borrowed money, people don't believe it, but it's true, on borrowed money, when the operation was done, she was discharged into the hotel so that she could be brought in once in a while, you know, for checkup, a review. Can you believe that when the driver of the embassy under the new government informed the ambassador that uh, I have to take Mrs. Rawlings, you know, for a review, the ambassador said no. In Switzerland, the Ghanaian ambassador, in, it happened in Switzerland, said no. The driver was so shocked, he put the embassy car key 
on the table, went and used his own personal car to go and drive my wife to the hospital for the review. This is the kind of vicious, petty-mindedness that you can sometimes run in parts of the world in terms of my relationship with this character that, you know, your Western powers or the Western powers have promoted and they are trying to sanitize his image as if he's the cleanest, finest head of state in Africa. It's absolute rubbish. He's a criminal. He's a thief. He went around telling the world, wrote a letter to every bank around the world that I had stolen suitcases of money into bank accounts. I was trying to kill him, make a coup. I had stolen 19 cars, etc. All of them were false. I will not tell you something that the bank... It took three months for me to be able to open a bank account through somebody. Finally... When, that, when the bank manager was going to open that account for me, do you know what he told his uh, Swiss friend? You can come and do it. Every day he goes there. Is it open? Is it open? Is it open? Finally, after three months, the man told my friend that he is one of the few African heads of state who does not own a foreign account. You can now come and open the account for him. I mean, the point I'm trying to make is, look at... The difficulty I had from my own government, from outside. But then the other side of it is that to be so mean that not even the driver could send my wife for a review. That ambassador, for being so he, he was so mean, the government withdrew every protocol facility as a former head of state. I have to carry my own suitcases. Never mind. They even tried to get Swiss Air not to give me protocol. And Swiss Air told them, uh uh, hey, you don't do that. They try to campaign with other governments. Don't give this man protocol, facility, etc. And yet, I'm supposed to have been the man who turned the situation around in Ghana, in West Africa. You know, so in effect, what I'm trying to say is that um, we've had a pretty rough time, but the more you show hatred, towards your opposition, sometimes towards us, the more you get promoted in some parts of the world. It's not healthy. I mean, we must begin to stop treating oppositions and ourselves as enemies. We must begin to rather engage in constructive um, a relationship, constructive criticism, and not, and not attempt to destroy and to see the opposition as your enemy to be destroyed. I mean, factories that were, we don't have time. Two hours, one hour is not enough. 30 minutes is not enough for you and I. I need nine hours. I need eight hours to wake you up in Italy, in Europe, to the problems we're going through in Africa. Yes.